In this video, we're going to talk about microcytic anemias. I said that microcytic anemias were due to a problem in hemoglobin synthesis. In our last video, we talked about the importance of iron, and we also talked about what can go wrong in the creation of heme, things like lead poisoning and things like sideroblastic anemia. In this video, we're going to go a little bit more in depth and see how these three can cause microcytic anemia. We'll start with iron. Iron, as you know, is an important part of heme. It's right in the center is what binds oxygen. And unfortunately, iron deficiency is incredibly common in the world. But before we go into that, I just want to show you how we absorb iron in the first place. Iron exists as both Fe2 plus and Fe3 plus. Fe2 plus is found in animal sources, Fe3 plus is more in, more in plant sources. Uh, we have to reduce Fe3 plus to Fe2 plus to absorb it. But these go into our gut and in our duodenum, we have transporters for these. And Fe2 plus will go in and Fe3 plus will be reduced and it'll go in into our gut, into our duodenum. And from there, it can enter our blood through a transporter called ferroportin. So Fe is now in our blood and that's a problem. We can't have free iron in our blood because uh, free iron is a free radical. So we have a transport protein called transferrin. And transferrin binds Fe and transports it where it needs to go. So Fe can be used or it can be stored. And when it's stored, it's stored as ferritin. That's how we store it. This is how we absorb iron, but there's not a good way to excrete iron. So our absorption has to be highly regulated. And it's regulated by a protein called hepcidin. So your liver makes a protein called hepcidin. So hepcidin. And hepcidin will block your ferroportin transporter, and that regulates your absorption. Makes perfect sense. Now we can draw blood and see how all of these are functioning. We can see the level of iron in our blood. So I'll just write labs for iron. We can check serum iron, that's just the iron in our blood. We can check ferritin, that's our iron stores. So stores. And then lastly, we can check something called TIBC or total iron binding capacity. What the heck is total iron binding capacity? What binds iron in your blood? That'd be your transferrin, right? And so TIBC is basically a measure of transferrin. Measures transferrin. Here's something important you should know. Ferritin and TIBC, ferritin and TIBC are inversely related, always. So for example, if you have a decrease in iron stores, if you have a decrease in ferritin, TIBC will always be increased. Why is that? Let's see if we can reason through it. If you have a decrease in iron stores, a decrease in ferritin, then your body says, I need to bind more iron, I need to grab more iron and store more. So, so your liver will start producing more transferrin protein. You're gonna try and bind more transferrin, so TIBC will increase. If you have increased iron stores, then your body will say, I don't need any more iron. I don't need any more transferrin. I'm gonna make less. So TIBC will decrease. Makes perfect sense. And so just know that these are inversely related. These are the main labs we take when we're looking for the iron levels in our body. So what kind of labs do you expect to see if you're iron deficient? How about your serum iron? Will it be high or low? It'd be low because you are deficient. How about your ferritin stores? Would it be high or low? It'd be low because you don't have iron. And because ferritin is low, I don't even need to look at this. What would your TIBC be? It'd be increased. It's always inverse. So those are the signs of iron deficiency on your labs. How do you treat it? You treat it by giving iron or you treat the underlying cause. Now sometimes it's not as simple as a patient's not eating iron, that's why they're iron deficient. Sometimes there's some underlying cause and the main underlying cause that you should not miss is bleeding. Yeah? 
they're bleeding and that's why they're losing iron in their blood. So bleeding. In women, you're thinking of menorrhagia. In kids, the most common cause of chronic bleeding is a Meckel's diverticulum. So right, Meckel's. In kids. In older men and postmenopausal women, if they come in and they're iron deficient, they have colon cancer unless proven otherwise. They're bleeding from colon cancer unless proven otherwise. You need to know that. Colon cancer of older. So bleeding is a big cause. Another cause is malabsorption. Where did I say you absorb your iron? Near your duodenum. So malabsorption. So anything that affects your ability to absorb things or anything that affects your duodenum. So if you had it resected for whatever reason, if you had like Crohn's, then you could affect your ability to absorb iron. Those are just some causes. There are a little bit more in my notes. So make sure you check those out. What are the signs of iron deficiency? How can you pick it up clinically? <clears throat> well, they'll be anemic since we're still talking about microcytic anemia. So they're gonna have signs of anemia, pallor, fatigue, but more specific signs is coilonychia. What the heck is coilonychia? That's when your nails get kind of spoon-shaped, yellowish. It's associated with iron deficiency. You can have glossitis, that's inflammation of your tongue. So you get this really large red tongue. You can have pica, which is a strong craving to eat basically inorganic things. Um, that's just your body craving for some sort of micronutrients. So um, ice chips, you can have bars of soap, like crazy things like stones, rocks, like anything that you don't usually eat, basically, that's pica. And there's one thing I want to talk about. <clears throat> In a patient that has iron deficiency, iron deficiency, glossitis, and they're <clears throat> they're having trouble they're having trouble swallowing for some reason. Ugh, dysphagia. And you look in and you see all these esophageal webs. That trio webs. That trio we call it Plummer Vincent syndrome, and we talked about that in our GIT block. Plummer Vincent syndrome. And that trio is highly associated with iron deficiency. That's what people propose starts all the other symptoms off in the first place. So plumber Vincent syndrome, that is iron deficiency. Let's move on now to lead. Lead is a nasty thing. Unfortunately, unfortunately, there's still a lot of lead in homes and pipes. And so we have to be vigilant in picking up lead poisoning. Lead, if you recall from our video about heme, Blocks, ferro, chilotase, that's one of the last steps. And also blocks ALA, dehydrotase. I just realized I made a mistake in, our, in my last video. I said ALA dehydrogenase is not ALA dehydrogenase, it's ALA dehydrotase. So I'll correct it in my notes, but lead blocks these two. And when you block those enzymes, you build up your intermediates. So those intermediates include things like protoporphyrin and ALA. And these are neurotoxic. So signs will be colicky pain, diarrhea, just because lead isn't good for your gut. So colicky pain, diarrhea. But the main thing we're concerned about is how is neurotoxic. So you're gonna have encephalopathy, you're gonna have fatigue, encephalopathy, fatigue. You're gonna have peripheral neuropathy, so you're gonna have wrist drop and foot drop, wrist and foot drop. All these because these build up of byproducts and lead. And when you look at the blood, you're gonna have anemia, but in particular, lead stops the, stops the degradation of ribosomal RNA. Recall, when we're making blood we have reticulocytes that still have RNA and then that eventually becomes your full-blown red blood cells and that doesn't have any nucleus mitochondria or RNA. Well lead blocks the degradation of this RNA so your mature red blood cells will actually still have that RNA and it looks like dots. Uh, it looks like stippling. Stippling means like dots. So we call that basophilic stippling. 
it's retained R ribosomal RNA. And that's due to lead. Very important sign that you should know. What are we gonna find on labs? How about increased lead? So you're gonna have increased lead level in your blood, in your urine. You're gonna have increased these. So ALA, proto, porphyrin. And you're also gonna have increased iron. Why do you have increased iron? Well, iron wants to bind to heme. And when you have a, and when you block the synthesis of heme, it can bind to it. And so it just goes in and tries to bind and doesn't, so it just builds up and builds up. We said that anything, any problem with making heme causes an increase in iron, well, this is no different. So you have an increase in iron, and the treatment is gonna be chelators. These are things that bind metal, so it'll bind lead and help you excrete it. So these include things like sesamer, penicillamine, not penicillin, penicillamine, and dimercoprol. Dimercoprol is more for um, really severe lead poisoning because dimercoprol can pass the blood brain barrier and really help in, I guess, the encephalopathy part. That is lead. So we talked about lead, talked about iron, let's talk about sideroblastic anemia. Sideroblastic anemias, we discussed briefly when we talked about ALA synthase deficiency. However, you should know sideroblastic anemia isn't a particular disease. It's actually a group of diseases. Sideroblastic anemia occurs whenever you have a problem with heme synthesis. And when I say what happens when you have a problem with heme synthesis, iron builds because it's trying to bind to heme and heme's not there. And when iron builds, it'll start to be pushed out to your periphery. Sidero actually means iron. So you have iron all the way in your peripheries. And that is sideroblastic anemia. So any problem making heme can cause sideroblastic anemia. When we talked about in our previous video, we talked about the inherited form. That was due to an ALA synthase deficiency. What was the inheritance pattern of that again? Can you remind me? That'd be X-linked. Non-inherited is gonna be anything that stops heme. We just talked about one about five seconds ago, lead. So lead can cause it. Alcoholism, because alcohol is a mitochondrial poison and uh, heme synthesis, a few of the steps happen in your mitochondria, so that's why it causes it. B6 deficiency, because B6 is a cofactor for ALA synthase. And what are the lab findings? They're gonna be based on basically iron overload, so you're gonna have increased ferritin. Uh, you have increased ferritin, what happens to your TIBC? It'd be decreased. Decreased TIBC. That's some of your microcytic anemias. Just wanted to recap these because we just went over them in our last video. In our next video, we're gonna talk about a few that we've missed. Till then, see you next time.